Hello people of YouTube and welcome back. So we're going to do a bit of a pickup video. So yeah, I've just come back from work and I've been thinking about this all, all shift. Bugger it. Let's go and show some of the stuff that's been amassing over two or three weeks now. And, um, maybe a little bit longer than that. But yeah, I thought I'd uh, do a bit of a pickup video. Like I say, get everything away. It's payday tomorrow so it kind of bottoms that off a little bit. Um, <laughs> I've already, uh, no, I know what I'm pretty much purchasing already. I've actually bought a couple of things already in preparation of payday. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else does that. Yes, I've got this much left. I might as well spend it before uh, payday. Yeah, that's uh, the mentality of it, isn't it? Yeah, addiction. The, the real face of addiction, isn't it? But yeah, anyway, enough rambling. What have I got? So I've got some retro. I know people like a bit of uh, contents of what's happening. Uh, so yeah, my contents are going to be retro, then there's going to be modern retro, and then there's going to be modern. <laughs> and uh, there's going to be some of that is going to be limited games. Yeah. So yeah, I'm going to do the retro first because I know people, uh, some people like to see that first and some people like to see the other stuff later on. So yeah, what have I got? Anyway, enough rambling. Bloody hell, that was a proper ramble, wasn't it? So first up, we have got uh, Macross Maniacs Advance. Didn't even know this was a thing. Um, I picked up Macross Maniacs on the Game Boy, was it last Doncaster Market? Um, like I said, it was one of my favourite games growing up. And uh, yeah, I just did it. I just randomly do Game Boy searches. Uh, and this came up uh, as like f a few days left. Um, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to keep an eye on that one. And yeah, I won it for like for around five quid, not much at all. Um, I was really pleased because I looked at like complete sell it, sold ones in America and they're like 30, 40 quid. So yeah, this is obviously, you can see it's got a bit of damage to the box there, but it is complete, as in it comes with the manual. It doesn't come with the uh, case for the, the GBA. Actually, I don't think it does come with a case other than they just come with a plastic bag. But yeah, uh, apart from that, it's not in too, too bad nick. Uh, it's obviously had a, th a sticker over here, and I think that's what's caused that damage. Uh, so it's not too bad. Like I say, I mean, fiber is quite good. It looks a beautiful game, I've got to say. Uh, I'm really looking forward to giving this a go. Uh, it only came out in America, which is probably why I never knew about it. I believe there's a Game Boy Color one, so I need to track that down now, and then I can have the trilogy. I think there's only three. Uh, I'll have to have a look. There might have been. I wonder if there, I don't think there was a console version of it. But yeah, that would be quite, quite a cool little uh, trilogy. Konami. Actually, did we even know it was Konami? Yeah, it was. Of course, it was Konami. I think it was like Palcom, wasn't it? I think originally. So um, yeah, really pleased to get that. Really pleased to get that. And sticking with the Game Boy again during the same sort of like search period, uh, probably within a day of each other, I won. Donkey Kong Land 3. And this was a bargain as well. This was like 20 quid, around 20 quid if I remember. Maybe less, maybe more. Look at that, look at how good this looks. It just looks brilliant. Um, yeah, look at the, the only side that's any good is this. I watched Ross Tendo's video the other day and he said the American ones were a lot better for the spines than the PAL ones. So maybe that's something to look into. So yeah, like this is the GBA American one. Look at that, it's got a proper spine, proper spine. You can actually display it. I don't know what they was thinking over here in PAL territories. Uh, obviously this is a late release because it looks so shit. Uh, but yeah, like I say, it almost looks fake. But, um, it definitely isn't it. You can see the, uh, the well, it's got the, that card and it. You can kind of, when you see it up close, it's got that sort of like uh, patina as it were. It's got the manual and it's uh, one of them, the Donkey Kong ones are all in the, the banana yellow carts which are pretty cool. Um, I've, I've only really played, uh, I think it's on emulators, I think I've only played these on emulators quickly. So um, yeah, really intrigued to see how these play. I suppose as well that sticker is really good as well. Um, I might keep that on, I don't know, although it does kind of ruin the aesthetic of the box. I don't know, should I keep the sticker? Sticky, yes I'll stick it now. What, what should I do? Right, that's the Game Boy. What else have I got? So, I was on eBay the other day, um, late at night, weekend, 
Uh, I, know, I had a couple of drinks, not a what, just like just tipsy drinks. And uh, you know what it's like, you get bored of watching a film. Let's go on eBay while I'm watching a film. Uh, and uh, yeah, I must have put a bid on something because in the morning I got a pitting uh, offer accepted. So yeah, I put a cheeky offer in for this uh, and they accepted. So what game is it? It's Mars Matrix. Oh, look, you can see me. Uh, Mars Matrix on the Dreamcast. Jesus Christ, I thought this was fake when it came, but uh, it's got the spine cartridge and it's even got the, what's it called? Um, cards that's inside. I don't want to ruin it. I'm, I'm ruining it already. This is probably the most it's been manhandled. But yeah, um, this is an awesome game. Uh, obviously it's a shooter, you know what I'm like with my shooters. Uh, a real big fan of them. Um, and yeah, the Dreamcast, it had a couple of really good ones. Uh, a lot of them were like really 3D, but this was uh, sprite based, which if you know me, um, I'm a real big sucker for sprite based artwork shooters. And uh, this is one of them. Uh, I think it's got a bit of a mixture of sort of like graphics, to be honest. But yeah, this is, I've, I've only played this briefly. What I, I, I knew I had to have it. I knew I had to have it. In fact, I can remember uh, what really got me looking for this game uh, originally. I was looking, I was trying to sell something on eBay. And um, you know how you do to see what price is like. And I found one. Um, game to match mine I can't remember what it was now but um, I was like I recognize that red sofa that this game not this game at the time but these other games were plonked on I was like <laughs> that was Jay Cybersnake so I found his like eBay and lo and behold he was selling this game and it was it was that cheap I was like shit I need to go buy this now but I was like one minute an hour and do I need to get any Dreamcast games at the game at that time uh, expensive Dreamcast games are like that and uh, I was like mm. next day I was like right I'm going for it and unfortunately it sold I was sort of it's a bit of a shame really because god he was selling that for dirt cheap um, I've not been able to find it that cheap since that listing uh, they used to usually go for around 100 quid and uh, I got this in double figures so uh, yeah really pleased with that 85 shekels uh, if you were a lot of money, a lot of money for a game essentially is just going to be sit on my shelf because I own two Dreamcasts. I have the one that's downstairs, which is on my big screen, and I have one in the game room that is uh, on the CRTs, which ultimately a game like this needs to be played on. But it's uh, GDMU, uh, which is just the um, what do you call it, the SD card. So Yes, I'll be able to play this on the CRT, but not with the disc. Um, so yeah, it just, it's just a good job it's got a bloody beautiful cover, hasn't it? So yeah, probably a sucker for that. I really am. Um, Capcom at his finest. There's a Capcom game. Need to have the Capcom games. Yeah, so um, even though I bought this for gaming pleasure, uh, it's really a collector thing, isn't it? I don't know. It's a bit of a weird conundrum. Where, where do I lie in that spectrum? Because like I say, this is bought to play, <laughs> except I won't be playing. And like for me, I, I really enjoy having these things on the shelf so I could go along and like I'll pick something out and then just play it on my EverDrive or GDMU. <laughs> weird, I'm a weirdo, very strange, very convenient as well. Now this one, I'm not too sure I will be able to play it on the GDMU. Another Dreamcast game. Um, yeah, this is a modern, modern Dreamcast game, the Texasist. So, yeah, this is number 456 of 600. Yeah, so what is this game? So, um, I'll show you the inside. It's got a disc, and I think it's got a soundtrack to it, and a manual, all that good stuff, and a cool, old culty slipcover. Beautiful stuff. Uh, it looks like a, like a, a Japanese uh, case. Um, but yeah, this is a modern modern game. Um, the text is the story of Ray Bieber. So this game, best way to describe it is it's like a twin stick shooter, but you use a keyboard to type things in, like typing of the dead. So you like you'll be running around the screen, and like a character will come up with I don't know Dreamcast, and you have to type Dreamcast really fast to shoot it and kill it. Yeah, I really like that concept. I think it's going to be really clunky to play because 
uh, at least with the type of the dead you just type in it but this you actually have to move and type at the same time so I'm really intrigued to see how it plays it wasn't actually that expensive it was like 30 quid or something maybe even less it might have been like 30 euros uh, it was from a company called uh, Game Fairy uh, so initially I only found this out because I was looking on eBay for Dreamcast games and this came up and uh, I thought that was quite interesting I thought I'd do a bit more research about it and uh, I have found that Game Fairy was selling and I, I always thought Game Fairy was just a store in like Germany or Holland or wherever it is uh, but they've started to do limited run games uh, and while I was looking for this and I found it on Game Fairy and put it in my basket um, I saw that they were selling this now I've heard about this game I had this um, actually in my Switch basket no I haven't I just heard about it. I was, I was hoping it was going to be PS4 and I didn't know there was a physical release of it. So this is a schmop on the Switch. Again, only on the Switch. Um, and yeah, I think they made this in limited quantities. I'm not too sure. It's like uh, Game Fairy number four. So there is other games. I don't think they're games that really interested me. Uh, how I first heard of Game Fairy, they used to like, as well, when they had a shop, they used to have the games in like this oversized box that came with a bit of a trinket G games that were just like sold on the shelves normally but they added something in on their own behalf uh, so that's how i heard about game fairy but yeah uh, rigid force cool looking schmuck uh, like a very modern looking schmuck like 3d visuals and stuff i heard it's quite good heard good things about it but i've not played it yet uh, i also also forgot to show this uh the textist uh the exercised version is that what it says the exercised version. Um, so this is a replacement disc. Please use this disc labeled exercise version to play. It contains the latest fixes and lets you enjoy the text assist on the Dreamcast to the fullest. So basically, uh, this is just a patch disc. <laughs> so yeah, it took, I like this took me about six months for them to come. I mean, this game was ready to go. Like I say, I already seen, seen it on eBay when I went to buy it, but it was wait, it was, this held it up. But I'm kind of glad it did because it just saved the postage two games for the price of one. So yeah, um, from from there, uh, I actually got these a couple of weeks, about a couple of months ago. I don't know why I'm only just showing it off now. Um, yeah, went to CX, had a couple of stuff lying around, and I got this. Actually, I think I actually bought this from Game, so I might be lying there. I think I did buy this from Game. It was like ten quid. Vanquish and Bay now. Steelbook. It's quite a it's quite a beautiful steelbook actually. It's like all in Boston and stuff like that. So yeah, two of my favourite games from my previous generation. Vanquish is just amazing. Um, yeah, <laughs> I can't I can't remember if I said this on stream or on a stream the other day or just to just chatting to people. But Bayonetta, not Bayonetta, Vanquish reminds me of a mech version of you know when you was at the. Um, weddings and stuff when he was a kid and used to used to be so bored up until the point that the the dance floor got cleared off and then you and your cousins would be sliding across the floor on your knees now that's the, this game is just basically that but with guns <laughs> it's, it's brilliant uh yeah like my favorite bit of this game is just sliding along and then like shooting everyone while you're sliding fantastic game really short some a couple of sega games uh, although I say Sega, it's uh, Platinum Games published by Sega. So yeah, great, great developer. I mean, I ha don't need to say anything about uh, Bayonetta. I'm sure we all know what Bayonetta is. And next up we have got uh, Metro Exodus. Yeah, this was in CEX and um, it's a special edition sold for the price of the normal one. I think it was like 11 quid or something. Ridiculously cheap for this cool little slip cover which this is a metal slip cover again for a metal steel book yeah lots of metal um, and then it comes with like a little thing so this I actually this is a game I've game series that I've never really played before um, but after I bought this game I actually went straight onto the PS4 and started playing the uh, remasters of the first game 
uh, the first Exodus get Exodus game, not Exodus Metro, Metro game. God, I'll get it. I'll get there in the end. Um, yeah, I started playing it. I, to be honest, I didn't really fully enjoy it. Um, it just felt too clunky, even though it was like the modern remake. So I, I think if I play the second one, I'm going to enjoy it more. Uh, yeah, basically there was like, it's quite cool. It's sort of like a horror first-person shooter. Uh, you was in a load of tunnels on the first one. Um, and then you're like sort of firing werewolves and other little monsters. This one I believe is more open world and yeah I'm actually I, I kind of want to just jump straight to this but I also want to play the originals. I don't know if I should give the first one a bit more time. I probably gave about two or three hours. Uh, I met a couple of colonies underground and everything like that but I'm kind of tempted just to go straight to is it the first light or whatever it's called the second the second game. Yeah, don't know. It's cool, like I say, cool addition. Uh, so next up, we've got, oh, I'm sure everyone, everyone seems to have got this. Uh, or, or at least waiting to get it. I know a few people have bought it and they're still waiting. I was waiting quite a bit. I had a couple of other things in the thing. And with that, I'm sure people know what it is. It is Andre, Andro Dunos 2. This is the rare, very rare opened edition. <laughs> So, yeah, unfortunately, on the seal, it had this, uh, the Pixel Heart uh, sticker, so I stuck, cut that out and put it there. So, yeah, the, this is what it looks like inside, guys. Can you believe it? I've, I've done this, so you don't need to. <laughs> so, yeah, this is copy 416 of 6,000. Yeah, um, I, have, I have a feeling, I, I was supposed to have checked this earlier. Uh, that this is a lot, a little bit thinner than a normal 3DS case. I mean, I know they're thin anyway, but it just feels a little bit thinner. I need to go check. Um, but yeah, this game, it's a shmup. It's another shmup. Of course it's another shmup. Uh, everyone's been waiting for this one because uh, this is potentially, I think it will be. It's not the last 3DS game because one came out just after this in America. Um, but it's the last PAL one. Um, so a lot of people are going to be wanting this in the future. I've noticed as well, the 3DS is getting to be the next console to collect for uh, after the Wii U uh, because it's got a fairly small library. And to be honest, there's not that much shovelware except the shovelware that is there is quite expensive, like Barbie. There's like three Barbie games, I think. <laughs> um, but apart from that, so my chair's swinging around, um, apart from that, there's quite a lot of good games. There's a lot of ports on it, unfortunately, but the library is not huge. So I think everyone's gra I've just noticed everyone gravitating towards the 3DS. Uh, I got it because I love the 3DS. Well, I love the DS, to be honest, and this is still the same family. Um, and it's a shooter. I mean, how do you? How often do you get a shoot on it? Now, it's got its problems. Uh, Retro Bake Break. I forgot what his name is. The guy from Retro Break, uh, he actually did a review on the 3DS one, and it's bang on. Like everything that he said, I felt exactly right for this. Uh, it's got glitches in the wrong places, um, and I feel like the worst bit is to get this copy. You you want it because it's going to play 3D, and uh, the problem is the 3D, especially in the later levels isn't optimized and I mean how I mean by that is when you're moving up and down through the different like levels and stuff like that you can crash in you've got crash damage to the walls and stuff but sometimes you because the 3D is in different layers uh, the the actual scenery that you can crash into is a little bit behind like where your ship and the enemies are so you feel like you're not going to crash into it but you do and uh, yeah it's you have a few Deaths uh, because of it. I mean, I used about 30 credits to get through this game. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, it's flipping brutal. A brutal game. Um, I had to take the 3D off on the last stage just because I just couldn't do it. it just I, it, it, The 3D worked really well with this because um, even though it's a modern shooter, it's very unusual. It does feel like it was made 20 years ago in the fact it's sprite-based and how it works. Um, yeah, I, I, it's a really good game, but this isn't the way to play it, even though it's quite a novelty way to play it. Like I say, I mean, 3D is quite good. 
up to the point at where it starts getting a bit too hard to use it. Like I say, it's probably about just about midway where it starts to become really a problem. Uh, before that, I think they probably put a bit more effort in and then they needed to rush it out maybe uh, to get to a deadline to put it on a cart maybe. That's, I'm presuming at this point, a bit of a shame really because like I say, it's a good game. Good game. But with that, <laughs> I had to get the PS4 version. Of course I did. I wanted to play it properly. I knew that wasn't going to be the ultimate way to play it. It would be on the PlayStation 4. None of that Switch shit. The PlayStation is the way to play a shooter. And uh, yeah, so this has got this one has got a general release. However, because of that, I thought, do you know what? Because I'm, I'm ordering that from Pixel Heart, I might as well get a bit, something a bit fancier and got the special edition. Now this is quite cool. It's number number eight of a thousand. So there's only a thousand copies of these in existence where I think the, the normal one is a lot higher number, the, the general release one. Um, so yeah, this comes in a fancy, fancy outer case, which <laughs> let's face it, I love these kind of things. I love fancy boxes. But yeah, I thought I'd uh, pre-open it so I don't damage it and uh, show you what's inside. So you have the game. If you see here, it says not to be sold separately, which makes it a bit different because the other ones have like the number on it and stuff like that. So this is standard, like I say, rare release because it's been opened and it's been played. I've completed it. <laughs> I've completed it with, I mean, I've completed it with a, a lot of flipping uh, continues. Uh, you have the certificate of authenticity. Uh, let's take a screenshot and uh, print it out. You can have one too. Uh, and then it comes with a steel book. Uh, so I'm not really a big fan of steel books. Really not. But this, I, I don't know. It, it's pretty cool. It's sort of like got hologram. It looks like a hologram behind it. So it kind of makes this stand out. Even though this is just really smooth. This, it would have been cool to have had that embossed as well. But um, yeah, it's got Android on us on the side there. Usually they don't always have something. And then it's got this on the back inside. Got a big mech, one of the bosses. Although that looks a lot more impressive there than it does there. But yeah, the game, pretty good. Uh, it's It has a, I think I'm what the Mega Drive game is. <laughs> it's on the Mega Drive and the PC engine, the shooter where you, you select through your weapons as you go in. It's kind of got that vibe to it, but also not our type. I was going to say our type without the shield, but you do get a shield on this. Um, yeah, it's, it, it feels a little bit r type but then a bit more extreme. Um, yeah, it's a great game. Like, it's a good, like, compared to the original, the original shits on this, like the original is so much better than this, I feel. However, it's great to have a game that plays like this in the modern era, because so many are just like, oh, it needs to be a bullet hell or else it can't be released. Or if it's not bullet hell, it's just not good. It, it just doesn't have like much character to it. This has got a character in spades. It really does. Uh, it looks brilliant. Um, and it, like I say, sprite based shooters, are, they're very rare to come by that does it right. And this does. Um, like I say, it just isn't, it's just not as good as the rest of them. However, it is a great game. I, I, <sighs> Flipping brutal though, that is the thing. That's the only downfall of this. It is very, 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 very hard. Um, but it's work, but you get unlimited continues and there's no checkpoints. You just, if you die and use a continue, you just carry on. So it's a good start one. I'm assuming if you raise the level, then it might go a little bit. You might have checkpoints. I've not actually done that. I'm considering doing it because once I've completed it, um, you have level selects where you can go back to your progress and go back and say I want to go here and practice the levels which is great for trying to learn how to one CC it but I also noticed there was two levels I haven't done yet so I'm wondering if I go and do this again in hard or whatever it's called uh, it might um, it might open up. I'm also considering going back and playing this on easy because I did find that um, the, the weapons that you have, you scroll through them and you have, you have like 
different styles of weapons like you have one that fires forward you have one that fires predominantly back but also forward you have ones that go diagonal which reminds like i say it reminds me of um Fuck, what's it called? <laughs> I can't remember. People shop shouting at me. The Mega Drive game, it's also on the PC Engine. Um, also reminds me of that. Um, but it just doesn't feel like it utilises the weapons perfectly. It's got a couple of moments where you're like, oh yeah, I'm going to have to switch it up to do this. But most of the time you can just blast at it. And it's got a really cool, like, it's got a really cool mechanic as well. That uh, you... you you have basically you have fire and you have another one that I think is called like ultra fire or something and when you press that it just fires at like a really high rate like a really powerful shot uh, almost like a bomb because it can uh, kill like the bullets as well kill the bullets <laughs> but after that uses your power your shot gets powered all the way down because you have like six levels of power on each of your shots and like I say it Again, how hard this is, you can never fully power up every one of your weapons. So you've always pretty much got a pea shooter at some point. So you're always waiting for that recharge to shoot. And I just want to have, I might actually go back, like I say, drop it down to easy to see if it makes it a little bit easier. A bit, a bit more like I can get everything overpowered. Because there's nothing better than playing a shooter and feeling overpowered because... That just feels great. This, I think the, the level of difficulty is just a little bit too high for it to feel that like, oh, I'm, I'm a proper badass space marine. Which, yeah, like I say, I mean, <laughs> I'm not very good at reviews. I'm really not. But I like, I did want to talk about this at one a bit because I did enjoy it. And it's one that I know a lot of people are waiting to play. Um, and if you're on the fence of this, it's about 17 quid from base in game collection as a standard version well worth that and and as well like the first few stages they are easy enough and great to learn how to be a, to play a shooter and like i say if you want a really a bit of punishment not even that much punishment if you want to beat a shooter this is beatable because of how many continues you can use so yeah pick it up everyone needs to have that in the collection uh, and lastly lastly also from Pixel Heart, we've got Ganryu 2. Uh, now, I forgot to, hang on, hang on. I forgot to pick this up as well. Uh, this is awesome. Uh, I would nearly didn't pick this up, um, but I added it to my order. I just canceled my order and reordered it again uh, when I found out about this. Um, and yeah, this is basically modern Shinobi. I mean, like, more like Shinobi, like free, um, like that kind of style. style of Shinobi. Is it Shinobi free? Yeah, Shinobi free. Is it Shinobi? <laughs> oh my god, is it? Is it Shinobi? Something that Sega game that got three of them. You got the Return of Shinobi and Shinobi free. Is Shinobi free? God, break. Like I say, I've just done ten hours at work, and now I'm flipping doing this because I'm stupid because I want to do it. Um, but yeah, this I've, I've only I've only done like a stage of this. I can't, I can't get any further <laughs> because uh, although you do look, it looks like you get unlimited continues. Jesus Christ, the checkpoints of this are brutal, brutal. Uh, <laughs> uh, but what was good about this is this didn't have a patch on it. I forgot to mention Android Do Not's had a 20 minute patch uh, just to get going, which was a bit of a, a bit sucked really for games like this that need a patch. But yeah, it is what it is. Um, yeah. Definitely, again, recommend everyone to get this. This one is uh, the Pixel Heart edition. That there's a thousand copies, and this is number 288. Again, Pixel Heart. I've done a standard version of this, and I actually think that the standard version has a better cover art. The cover art looks pretty good on this, but when you see the actual one, this the standard release, it looks beautiful. <laughs> it looks like a just a great. Uh, I mean, like I say, this looks good, but yeah, this is based. Uh, originally this was a Neo Geo game I think, uh, an arcade game uh, and this plays a little bit different than the original one because the original one was a bit more like vertical up and down uh, when you were playing it. This is a bit more like I say shinobi left and right and then a little bit of vert verticality. Looking at fucking awesome, it really is. I can't wait to try and get better at this. Now what's quite good, again what um, these are doing as well, uh, they send these mailers, what they call mailers. Um, 
and it for each of the games. This is the Ganrio one, and there's a potential to have a golden ticket in there. And if you get the golden ticket, you get a special prize. And the pr special prize of this one is this game on Neo Geo car, which is pretty cool. But for all of us plebs that didn't win, spoiler alert, you just get like these. So it just shows you the button controls and everything like that. Um, another nice little postcard with a little bit of a write-up on it. The, I mean, these these are actually these feel really nice, um, really good quality. So, so these both of these games are by um, Visco. So I, I guess they bought the license to some of these Neo Geo games. And then you've got the these as well. I mean. Again, paper. I don't know, really know what these are. PX mission instructions. Support Musashi. I've got two of them. I don't know why I've got two. I think there was only supposed to be one. Uh, so I've got a support Musashi in his long journey to Ganryo Island with a great meal. Discover and make attached recipe. Then post a photo of your dish to social networks with the hashtag Ganryo2. So what's the recipe? Chicken, well it's not very vegan is it? <laughs> is there a vegan one? Is that what the... Re There's two different recipes. So we've got two different food recipes. So I might try and do that. Might might do that. It'd be quite fun to make a recipe. Uh, yeah. Didn't know about that. I'm going to keep that out and uh, have a look. But yeah, that's my pickups for this fortnight, three weeks, whenever it is. Like I said, I've got a load more coming. Um, I'll try and space them out a little bit because I probably can't, even though I've just done loads of overtime, what I want to come, um, I probably can't afford to get any more, much more stuff to be fair. So anyway, thanks for watching. See you on the next one. Peace.